Shalom, Ms. Melanie Wisdom. I want to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh and His only begotten Son. So, I was at work and I was just sitting and meditating. I was thinking like, and the Holy Spirit had just revealed some things to me um, about a rebellious spirit. The rebellious spirit that's on the daughters of Zion. Just uh, more so like where, is, where it comes from. And why we as women still deal with that spirit um so i met i just kind of wrote some notes down so i can remember um my thoughts and everything that i wanted to share with you all so i'm gonna start off with uh, a scripture Syrac 25 and 24 and it reads of the woman came the beginning of sin and through her we all die so that's deep within itself it was the woman through her was the through her was the beginning of sin and through her do we all die so as women we got to recognize that it's something inside of us that's not inside of men there's something more wicked that's inside of women that's just not inside of man and you know we all know that started back in the garden of eden with eve you know but i just wanted to share some thoughts that i had um, some notes i wrote down and just be open-minded and through the spirit hopefully i can open the eyes and allow help the daughters of zion see like what's truly the spirit that and me myself still dealing rebelliousness we gotta acknowledge we gotta acknowledge it and stop denying that it's there so it says um <clears throat> a woman can only truly submit only after she has totally put off her rebelliousness and began to deal with her rebellious spirit. Everything is spiritual. Your spirit is rebellious and you have to purge it out through fasting and praying and hitting your knees, begging the most high to take that rebellious spirit from you or else Yahweh will purge it out of you in the wilderness. First acknowledge that we have a rebellious spirit. Women are afraid to humble themselves to themselves because of the fear of acknowledging she has a problem. So it's easier to act and to put on because we all like to think that we are perfect. Hmm. So she definitely isn't going to let anyone else know, especially not a man, because then she will reveal that she is vulnerable and actually the weaker vessel. Because a woman today like to feel equal to a man, a man, or even better than a man, this is confusion and wickedness. Women have to accept the wickedness or acknowledge the wickedness that's inside of her and begin exposing it so the healing process can start. So then was my thoughts and I had literally just jotted them down so I didn't forget it. And I wanted to just share that with y'all and, and really meditate and think about what I said. So I found the perfect um story in the bible that really represent the rebellious spirit um that's in women so we're gonna get the story of hagar i'm pretty sure sisters done read this story over and over again and know the story so i'm gonna hit a few verses um just sharing the story and then elaborate on what i seen through the spirit through this story that's still on the daughters of zion today so um, Genesis 16 and 1 through 11, and it reads, Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare him no children, and she had in hand made an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, gave her to her husband, Abraham, Abraham, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah said unto Abram, Abram, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw, 
she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand to, to her as it pleased thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence comest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered of multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child and shall bear a son, and it shall come and, and, and shall call his name Ishmael, because of the Lord had heard her affliction. So bottom line, the basis of this story. Once Hagar conceived from Abraham, a spirit came on her, a wicked spirit came on her, a rebellious spirit came on her, and she began to despise Sarah. She started to look at Sarah as she dishonored her, is what she did. So when she dishonored Sarah, she felt like she was over Sarah, you know? So the whole time, mind you, this is Sarah's maid, but she's bucking up against her, 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 her master. You know, she's operating in pure rebelliousness. And so when Sarah began to deal harshly with Hagar, Hagar fled. She didn't want to submit herself under Sarah no more. She was in total rebelliousness and she fled. And when she had fled, the spirit of uh, the angel came and spoke with Hagar and told her, you need to submit yourself and return back unto your mistress. <laughs> I don't know how many sisters watching today that can relate to when we get out of order with our with our lords, with our kings, how the most high check you. I mean, and he check you immediately because we're wrong and we're moving in the wrong spirit. We're, we're, we're literally moving in a rebellious spirit as Hagar was. It would Hagar, what the Lord send the angel to say to her, submit thyself, go submit yourself and return back to your mistress. So it's, if, if, if the Lord sent the angel to speak to Hagar, telling her to submit herself and return back to her, her mistress, how much more do the daughters of Zion have to submit themselves unto their own Lord, unto their own husbands to humble ourselves down to our own husbands and be submissive. We got to put off that rebellious spirit off of us. And if you say, well, I don't have a rebellious spirit on me anymore. Okay, cool. Do you still get in arguments with your Lord? Do you still argue with your king? If you still arguing with your king, it doesn't matter how big or small the argument is. You still have a spirit of rebelliousness on you. That's, that rebelliousness is still there because when you're not rebel when you, when the rebelliousness is not there anymore you just be like okay I'm just I may not agree but okay I'm just gonna go along you know I'm just gonna agree with you okay but that's where we all gotta get to and I even acknowledge myself I still have a rebellious spirit on me that I'm dealing with that I'm praying that the most high I've been begging the most high to take this rebelliousness from me because I don't have it inside of me to do it myself and I can acknowledge that and the only way that you can go ahead and start to even heal and begin to grow you have to acknowledge your sins you can't hide it or try to cover it up from the most high you can't fake it or try to pretend as if it's not there and it's not present anymore because the, it, the rebellious spirit is still there and is still present amongst the daughters of Zion. So I actually went on ahead and um, I had looked up what despise really meant. So I found it in the, um, the blue letter 
and it, you can also find it in the Strong's Concordance, uh, Hebrews 7043, and the word is pronounced kaolau, kaolau, and it means to treat with contempt and to dishonor. So I went on ahead to get a further understanding of what contempt was. And contempt means the feeling that a person has, that the feeling that a person or a thing is beneath consideration, is worthless or disregard. So when we buck up against our husbands and when we are operating in that spirit of rebelliousness, basically that's what we're saying. Like we don't honor this man. We're not honoring him. That we're literally despising his words or um, his directions or what he tell us we should do, right? We're despising him. We're, we're feeling like uh, what he's saying is beneath consideration that is worthless. And that spirit, you got to acknowledge that spirit. And you got to give it to the most high through fasting and through and through praying. We can only begin to change once we acknowledge there is a problem. And the problem is having a rebellious spirit. If you're still arguing with your husband, and you, then you still have a rebellious spirit. So I have a couple more scriptures. James 4 and 1. And it reads, four verse one. Nope, four verse ten. So like you, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. How do we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord? Well, as wives, as the daughters of Zion. We humble ourselves to our own husband. That's how we humble ourselves to the side, in the sight of the Lord. We humble ourselves to our own husband. Now the precept, Ephesians 5 and 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. How do we submit to the Lord? Well, we submit to our own husbands. That's how we show we submit ourselves to the Lord. That's how we show we love the Lord through the love that we have for our husbands. We have to be pillars of rest, daughters of Zion. So hopefully this helped and this was edifying. And until next time, shalom.